morning, lunatics, and welcome to another edition of Morning Java. Chris Bradford along with Taylor Haas, and as always, sponsored by the good people at Get Go Cafe and Market, where this month, of course, it's March, which yeah. means one thing. Yeah, but mint, mint milkshakes, mint everything. McDonald's is canceled because <laughs> the mint milkshakes at Get Go, oh my God, they're so good. You can get Oreo in them. Are they green? Oh yeah, of course. In like a lion, out like a lamb. It's, it's all March. It's all yeah. leprechauns. Four leaf clovers, four leaf luck. Um, uh, all three teams in the Penguins organization could probably use uh, some luck. Um, there's a good chance none of them could make the playoffs. That is a very interesting mm -hmm. development. The last time the Penguins did not make the Peng uh, did not make the playoffs, of course, was mm -hmm. Sidney Crosby's rookie year. I covered that team, and honestly, be going into that season, that was coming out of the lockout. Mm -hmm. Everyone had the Penguins pegged as a playoff team, yeah. possibly a Stanley Cup contender. They had Mario Lemieux and John LeClaire and Ziggy Palfi. They had all these free agents that looked like they were going to put it all together, mm -hmm. and of course, it failed miserably. Yeah, and then, I mean, they have the longest active playoff appearance streak. Wilkes-Barre also has the longest active playoff appearance streak in the AHL. I think it's 17 years. They've only missed the playoffs, I believe, twice in their history. Mm -hmm. um, they're currently on the outside of a, of, a, of a playoff spot. That's, you know, a product of all the trading away, the first round picks and the prospects. Um, and then Wheeling, Wheeling's probably not going to make it either. They're on the outside of a spot. Um, they, they didn't make it last year. They, they've, they've gone through a lot. But, yeah, that, that could be crazy if there's no playoff hockey to cover in the organization. Yeah, 12 straight years for the Penguins making the playoffs. That is the longest streak. The Minnesota Wild, another team that's on the playoff bubble, mm -hmm. they're second. Yeah. You're going to be the last one to agree with this, but are baseball games too long? Yeah, I'm starting to think so. Even, even you? Yeah, I, I think. No, I'm not, it's one thing to play a three hour game and it moves along, you know, and you don't really think, wow, this, this game's lasted three hours, but it seems like some of the games drag now. There's not much action, there's more strikeouts, there's more walks, there's more home runs, more switches, pitching actually, changes. More, more pitching changes. And I think, you know, Neil Huntington made a good point to me about this last year. He said when he was scouting for the Indians, he co covered a couple of those epic Yankee Red Sox games in the early 2000s. He said one game lasted nearly five hours, but yeah. it didn't feel like it because the game was moving along and it was an exciting game. So if it's a, it's a, it's a three-hour game and there's some excitement in it, you can live with that. But when it's three hours and it seems like there were about six seconds of excitement, that makes it a long night. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, there are lots of different proposals. But actually, some are already in motion, obviously, last year with the kind of pitch clock between innings it doesn't really get enforced minor league baseball of course has a pitch clock on the pitchers they there's a time limit um the most of the the guys who i've talked to who've had experience with that in the minors will say it hasn't really affected them yeah. they just adjust they just whatever mm -hmm. but I, there's got to be something my favorite thing that i've heard from anybody any idea is having a pitcher come in and face a minimum of three batters barring an injury yeah that that'll be interesting because certainly that changes the dynamic but then again 30 years ago it wouldn't have mattered because you didn't really have one batter specialist that tony la Russa started doing with the a's in the early 90s and then everybody started doing it but i will say this from the pirates front of things I don't think that's going to affect them very much. They don't really have that left-on-left -left specialist. That they don't they believe get. in it. They yeah. don't believe in it. They yeah. like their pitchers to pitch full innings. Or Including their innings. lefties. Clint, in yeah. particular, Clint Hurdle, really, they wanted everybody to be, for, for lack of a better term for this, they wanted everybody to be a John Grabo, Tony Watson yeah. type, yep. who could just come in and get lefties and righties out equally. Yeah, and that's why I think that that's one team it won't affect because the Pirates don't really ever do that. Very, very rarely. Only in a really tight situation they may bring a lefty or a righty in for one specific hitter, but you know for who, the most part it never happens. You know who else it wouldn't have affected? The man for whom this bullpen is made. Right? The baron of the bullpen himself, Elroy Face. That's right. Elroy would come in and take the ball in the fourth inning and finish the game for you like a man. So, Chris, Mike Sullivan made an interesting decision last game in Montreal to uh, start Matt Murray instead of Casey DeSmith in back-to-back -back games. And, I mean, Carey Price was also playing a back-to-back, -back, but still, that, would, that came as somewhat of a surprise. Yeah, Matt Murray's not a guy who's, who's used to playing back-to-backs. I think mm -hmm. he's done it four times previously in his career, but I applaud Mike Sullivan mm -hmm. for having the courage of his convictions to stand by his guy. I mean, I think we've said this a million times. If the Penguins are going to go anywhere in the playoffs, it's going to be Matt Murray who's going to take him there. Mm -hmm. No offense to Casey DeSmith, who I think is a fine backup, mm -hmm. but this is Matt Murray's time. He's the number one goalie, and I think he showed, despite some inconsistencies lately, that... He's still a pretty good goalie, and Mike Sullivan, 
despite all the, the grief he's taken recently, he knows his team far better than I do or you know anyone else in the, in the, uh, the cheap seats. So mm-hmm. it was a good call, and it, it worked out for him. Yeah, I mean, how much, how much of a challenge do you think it is to play back-to-backs for goaltenders? Because, I mean, it, they are – might, it might not look like they're doing a whole lot, but they are <laughs> moving a lot. But, like, because I just think – I mean, I covered, you know, Wheeling, Wolfsbury, and goaltenders down there play back-to-backs pretty often. I mean, when you're playing three games in three days – I mean, you see it probably uh, fair often that fa- fairly often down there. Do you think it really matters? I think it's a physical challenge yeah. and a mental challenge as well. I mean, yeah. it's tough. You know, you have to study the, the, the next opponent. Mm-hmm. But for especially for a goalie like Matt Murray, he's like 175 pounds. You sweat off 10 pounds at least mm-hmm. each game. It's a lot of recovery going on there. You know, they, the strength and conditioning team, I think, did a really good job in getting him ready for that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Again, Mike Sullivan, he knows his team far better than we do. Yeah, and then, I mean, Carey Price is also playing back-to-back, mm-hmm. um, you know, on the other hand, and he's, I mean, one of the best goaltenders in the league, and he, <laughs> the Penguins had four shots that period, and he stopped one of them. So, yeah, I mean, it could go either, either way. It's a risk. It paid off. Mike. Carey yeah. Price doesn't have rings neither. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Sullivan, uh, Sullivan said it was a risk. Uh, they, they started him. He wanted to see how Murray could handle the challenge, and... Um, the standings that like he he knows like you yeah said it was that, a statement he was yeah. sending a statement he he wanted, he wanted to show that this is his guy mm-hmm. and it worked out for him yeah they can roll with him moving forward.